Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again. This is Army of Two, Devil's Third demo, and this is going to be a, a normal, or hard, I think it's hard difficulty, because you can't go any harder than that, which is insane, playthrough of the, the new Army of Two uh, sampler. Now the first thing you're going to see me doing here is going through the equipment and blinging out my M4 because I haven't used this gun really. I personally used the SCAR on my first playthrough of the demo and I would recommend using it over this because this is gun's performance and precision is nowhere near the same as the SCAR's. SCAR's is just better in every way. Uh, I would also recommend using the armor piercing rounds rather than extended mag. I just wanted to test it out because I was still in the, you know, the, the messing around area of this game. And this is, this is the new Army of Two. So how do you guys feel about Army of Two? I really liked the first game. I thought it was kooky. I thought it was goofy. I thought it was just the right edge of, you know, generically average game. But in co-op, it was, it really came alive. It was really fun. It, it looked quite polished. You know, it was it was a third-person shooter. It wasn't the best you've ever played, but it was functional. Uh, the second one came out. It improved a lot of things, but I just didn't like it as much because it it got rid of a lot of the fun. And on this one, they've they've gone a completely different direction because, as you can see, we're playing as these two random guys that are not Rios and Salem, and you know, personality-wise, they're pretty bland. Uh, I must say, I do like the look of the character here. I like his shirt underneath the, all the armor cladding and that. I think it looks cool. And from the customization menu, it looks like you're going to be able to customize your guy's tattoos, his mask face paint, his, his, his weapons, obviously, and, and the way he looks. So they're definitely opting it for this build-your-own, you know, PMC guy. And I think that's a good thing because the player's ability to customize things and, you know, to modify and create their own identity in these digital worlds is, is one of the biggest reasons why we come back to, to playing any kind of game. And I think it's a pretty interesting take on the situation. Uh, as you can see, we're getting feedback when we kill people, we're getting tag team kills, flanking bonuses, you know, headshot bonuses. It all seems very, you know, carrot on a stick feeding into that, that Call of Duty mentality of constantly giving you something to work towards with experience. It's, you know, it's a culmination of a lot of different gaming ideals that you see recently. And the thing that gets me with it is the shooting doesn't feel great. It doesn't feel bad, but it's definitely not the best you've ever felt. The movement doesn't feel great. It isn't bad, but once again, it's not going to change your life. The cover is better than the last game because I don't think there was a cover system in the previous ones. You just kind of crouched and it was kind of progressive. They, they moved behind cover and they did it for you. They've, they've given it a, a, a move between cover system, which is obviously something from newer games and you know, they're definitely trying to to make it stand up there against the other third-person shooters, but the biggest thing against this game is it's just unbelievably generic. Like, I don't think they could have picked a worse place to send these people than Mexico. I just don't find anything interesting remotely in the scenarios of taking down drug cartels. It, it could be fantastic, it might be brilliant, but... Everything about it just really screams generic, which is a shame because I do like the Army of Two series and one of the things I liked the most about the previous ones was the fact that both the lead characters were well anything but generic. They were you know, they were larger than life characters. Sure there was the, the witty shorter guy, bit of short man syndrome going on, and the, the large, bulkier, you know, strong dude, but it wasn't just that simple. They they had layers to them and while I didn't enjoy the, the direction those characters took in, in that second game or some of the story moments, I still enjoyed their journey because I enjoyed those characters. And on this, it almost feels like you're putting yourself in your character's place. So there is not going to be much of a journey. There's just probably going to be some kind of conspiracy. And this almost feels like a multiplayer single player. It feels like a, a bunch of scenarios set up intentionally to enable you to, you know, to play. Is that a bad thing? I suppose it all depends on what your perspective is on this kind of game. You know, this is not bad by any standard. It's just massively uninspiring. And there hasn't been that many third-person shooters recently, so I think that they're definitely going to get away with it. 
But as it stands, you know, if this had been a first-person shooter, I don't think anybody would have gone near it, because we've had a lot of those recently, and the fatigue in those has definitely set in. While as third-person, there's not been that many jumping up recently, so it's it's definitely going to hopefully carve out an area for itself. But grenade throwing, there's no reticle on grenades. I don't understand that. I don't like it. Sure, once you've played it for a while, it's probably going to feel really good, but it just seems kind of interesting. There's there's a lot of good in this game. This is only on hard difficulty. There's one difficulty after this, but they don't let you play it on the demo for some reason. Uh, one thing it seems to do from this demo is it seems to uh, really be giving the player an option on how they approach a scenario, because in the previous games, when you were doing the, the leg up up the walls to get to the next area, they were always preset. You both did them. On this game, you can choose whether or not you go first. And uh, I know in co-op you could do that before, but it seems almost every time something like that happens, on, on the demo at least, it's branching you off into a different perspective. For instance, this moment right now, you can either be the guy on the ground, or you can be the guy on the balcony. It's entirely your choice. I chose the balcony because it's what I did the first time, and uh, I found it the most fun. Later on in, in this demo, you get the choice of either being a, a chopper pilot and gunning against a building, or being the dude running and getting covered by the chopper, which it's you know it's it's not a massive thing, but it does help in diversify the gameplay, which was one thing that the last Army of Two didn't have. So that's definitely a good thing. I like the the commands of the AI. The AI seems really really good. I haven't had a single complaint on this, and if you played Army of Two, the original. The AI on that game was fucking diabolical. So bad. Unbelievably bad. It wasn't even worth... You know, if you went down, he would drag you around as if he was trying to get some kind of mileage out of the backside of your jeans. Just, just absolute complete nonsense. But on this game, it seems to be very competent. Especially if you put it in the chopper, it seems to be the best chopper pilot ever conceived. Uh, this sequence here, if you activate your Super Psycho gun mode, uh, do not turn it off like I did. I actually thought he was dead, and he wasn't. He just staggered back. So here's me thinking, I've done this area, I turn it off, he's still alive, and he nearly kills me. So be very careful with that. And if you're using the scar, as I've mentioned, and you're using the armor-piercing rounds, you'll kill this guy in less bullets than what I've hit him with now, because this gun's just not as good. But the... They've, they've stretched it in a lot of different ways. A lot of the customization is, is is a lot deeper than before. There's there's more camos on this game than I think I've ever seen in any game, and they've always had a wealth of them previous. But this one seems even more so. It almost seems like the customization is is what this game is all about, and I believe that is probably the justification for making you players, you know, random soldier guy number one with his best friend and the ever memorable random soldier number guy number two. Uh, this sequence here, if you picked up the saw, you can cut these guys down real quick and you get a nice 250 perfect breach bonus. And then you're faced with a choice. If you go in the chopper, it's more difficult because I have to say, it's probably the most un underwhelming chopper gunner section I've ever played. The barrels take about 50 bullets to blow up. The humans die quite quick, but everything else just doesn't feel satisfying. So instead, uh, I decided to to send him up there and you're gonna see what this this computer does perfect aim on a chain gun it's never gonna end well but on this corner there's a couple of guys and he's gonna kill them before I do you see him rip them to bits and jib them it's pretty good I do like the the dismemberment aspect but I don't think the normal guns do it as well as the choppers do which is a bit of a shame and all I'm going to be doing here, guys, is letting him kill everything. I'm going to be pushing forward. It seems reckless, but it does work. Uh, I don't know if it'll be that viable on the hardest difficulty, but we'll soon find out, because uh, I will be covering this game. Uh, my, my buddy Aiden from the, the Time Cop crew, he's probably going to end up purchasing in it, because he's a, an Army of Two big fan, and I've played all of them through him. So hopefully he'll do some recording of it and I can link you to his channel and you can see, you know, what he feels about it. But as it stands, it's not bad, but that doesn't mean it's amazing and that's the biggest criticism I have. It's just so unmemorable and that's a shame. 
but that might just be me because Aiden sent me a message saying have you played the new demo it's amazing I can't wait and uh, I don't think this is amazing <laughs> I really don't but it seems playable it seems functional if not you know a little uninspired so watch how much this guy takes this guy's a pro I thought he was dead he ain't dead so I stab him with my really bad flaccid looking melee animation and all that's left to be done is to run back towards the tower, jump across, save your buddy, and then shoot a chopper pilot. But uh, I wanted to cover it just to give people, you know, a brief interlude into what the guide will be. Because the best thing about the demos is, you know, if you're new to the channel or you only watch a specific thing on my channel, this gives you an opportunity to watch something different, sample something you might not normally go near. And who knows, you might be really looking forward to the full game. But... It comes out on the 28th of March, I think. Which is only, you know, about nearly three weeks away. And it's definitely something to cover. But, here we go. This is the end of the demo. All that's left to be done is to pull this guy up and then shoot the pilot. So as soon as the reticle's on the screen, hold the left trigger and try and be accurate because this guy can kill you. Well, there you go, folks. That is Army of Two's The Devil's Third demo. I hope you enjoyed it and will be looking forward to the guide when the game drops. You take care now.